Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 197 of the Spearhead Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. And uh, yeah, look, uh, it's looking like restrictions are going to be lifted like next week. If you're in Australia anyway, I know if you're in the land of the free home of the dead, you're probably walking around doing whatever the fuck you want. Um, freedom! <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the motive of, of America right now. Land of the free... <laughs> I need to do my shopping at the mall. Dude, I got some dumb comments on my fucking video. The one I put up criticizing the the mega churches, making fun of them, bro. Dude, there is there really are those those freedom Americans. You know those ones that are like, ah, oh, you wouldn't understand freedom, seeing as you're from Australia. Yeah, cool, bro. How many prisons have you got? <laughs> All of them? Nah, look, I'm not going to get into this fucking conversation. But I met, met a lot of people a little bit little bit grumpy with the, the video about the pastors. I don't know why, right? Uh, mainly because half the video was spent on some fucking Korean dude. Yeah, I, got, I got one comment that made me mad. I'm going to find it. Um, so yeah, I do, I do these videos on these fucking mega churches and... First of all, I get I make one joke about George Pell fucking a kid, and I get the, this dumb as fuck comment from some guy saying he's unsubscribing, right? Here we go. Who's this? From Bill Owen. Time to unsub. And some other guy goes, "Why?" And uh, he goes, "Calling Christians stupid." Hey, Bill. They're Catholic. George Pell's a Catholic, bro. And also the Korean pastor that I was making fun of, he's not Christian. He's a cult leader. He's saying that he is the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. If you're saying you're a God, you're a cult leader, bro. That's what Jesus was. And then it turned into a religion. Any fucking religious movement that has a leader that says they are God, that's a cult. Straight out. You know, that's why uh, uh, Catholicism is not a cult. Because the guy at the top doesn't say that he's a god. It's a very slim distinction. I mean, yes, you know, they have to wear uniforms, they've got uh, compounds, and they fuck kids. But it doesn't meet the final criterion, which is having the guy at the top say that he is a god. I feel like that, that really is what a cult is, huh? That's the difference between a religion and a cult. Although I suppose Scientology's there. Like, what, what was the cunt's name? L. Ron Hubbard. Was he saying that he was a god? Or is there even gods in Scientology or everyone's just inhabited by aliens? I don't understand that. Anyway, this comment reads, right? From Bill, Bill Owen, PhD. Fucking dickhead with a PH. Um, calling Christians stupid and also alleging that George Pell is guilty despite getting completely cleared in the high court. These aren't the kind of jokes I find funny. Oh, sorry, Billy. Sorry. Sorry for making pedophile jokes about George Pell and offending your sensibilities for some reason, right? Let me tell you about George Pell, all right? Yeah. Dude got cleared in high court of not fucking children. Okay. Look, I disagree but, I, but let's say that that's true, okay? For the sake of argument, let's say George Pell didn't fuck kids, all right? Now, is George Pell still a good person? Well, you know what else got recently proven in the recently declassified documents from the Royal uh, Commission? George Pell had full, complete knowledge of multiple priests fucking children. And he, as the leader of the Catholic Church in Australia, did nothing. Knew about multiple priests, fucking children, and even helped and facilitated them moving to different parishes instead of kicking them out. So, okay, let's say he didn't fuck kids, which, hey, I think he did, but let's go with the High Court. Let's say he didn't. So, instead, George Pell is a pedophile protecting, pedophile sympathizing, pedophile watching and doing nothing, cunt of a man. 
that's the f- that what's going to get you to unsub. Me joking about that. Sorry, I guess I'm not the comedian for you. Maybe we could find it. If anyone would like to comment below, a pro-pedophile comedian, perhaps, you know, a comedian that would sit by and watch someone else fuck kids and do nothing, maybe Bill would enjoy them, that, those kinds of jokes. Do we know any of those pro-pedophile comedians? They're not pedophiles themselves. They're just like, yeah, I mean, if you want to fuck kids, I'm not going to do it, but if you have to, you go ahead. I mean, I'm not going to fuck kids, but I will help you hide after you fuck a kid. No worries. Yeah, that's the... Sorry, I got angry. The, why do I have to start this podcast angry? I had such a good episode planned. You know why I'm, I'm pissed off, right? You know why I'm angry? It's not George Pell's fault, right? It's some kind of real problem. As always, I'm not annoyed by anything real. I'm annoyed by small little shit. Like this fucking microphone stand. Jesus Christ. I'm going to be... Next episode... I think if this electrician isn't lying to me, I'm going to be in the new podcast space, which to you will be the old space, the setup. With oh my god, we're sitting. I'm gonna fucking we're setting everything up in the. I'm sorry about this, guys. I've been doing this for almost 200 episodes, and I I still don't have a hang of my fucking shit, right? But I guess you know that's Spearhead Sundays. That's how unprofessional this podcast was. Last episode on on the YouTube version, there was a massive audio syncing error. Like my mouth wasn't in tune with my words. It wasn't in time. It was so out of sync. I edited that. I uploaded it. I saw the error. I had time to fix it. And I was like, you know what? It's Spearhead Sundays. Fuck them. And it went up. And you know what? I wrote in the top comment, anticipating some complaints, which to be honest, would be fair enough. Audio sync shits me a lot. When I see that stuff, when the guy's mouth is out of tune with what he's saying, looks like a fucking shit ventriloquist, right? When I see that shit, it annoys me. So I was like, oh, pe- this, people are going to be annoyed by this. I've got to say something. So I wrote in the top comment, um, there's some audio syncing for the first 15 minutes. It fixes itself. Sorry. And then I just wrote, it will probably happen again. Because let's be honest, right? This is Speared Sundays. It's going to happen again. Worst podcast in the country. And that's kind of why we're here. That's the motto. This sucks, and that's why we're here. Uh, And you know what? Not a single complaint. (laughs) Not one. Like, I'm sure people noticed. I'm not saying that nobody noticed. I know for sure that that fucking thing got two, two and a half thousand views. I know at least 10 of you cunts noticed. But all of you went, ah, it is Spearhead Sundays. And no one commented anything. I make a mistake on Luke and Lewis. Bro, that's 30 comments. I fuck up on the main channel. That's 100. On Spearhead Sundays, everyone goes, ah, it's kind of what I expected, really. I have very low expectations for this show, and that's why I'm here. So, guys, look, I'm annoyed because, right, George Pell, on paper, doesn't fuck kids, but he does watch his mates and then help them hide afterwards. It's like, fuck a kid and go seek, you know? Fuck a kid, hide and seek. I'm going to stop talking about it. I know it's not very funny. Um, I'm annoyed because... I've ne- I've ne- I'm out of home now. I've never rented in my life. And I used to see all of these fucking, all this shit on Twitter of cunts going, oh, being a landlord should be illegal. And I would always read that and I'd be like, oh, that's fucked bullshit. If you work hard and you buy a home, you're providing people with a very essential service. You know, you took the risk on the home loan. You took the risk on putting all that money down and maintaining the property. You can make a profit on that. That's how the world works. You're doing a good thing. As long as you charge a reasonable amount, that's fine. Go for it. That's a great thing. Guys, look, I, this is my first experience with the landlord. And I, you know what? I'm ready to get the fucking pitchfork out. This sucks. Right? This sucks. We go to the fucking landlord. I'm gonna charge. I'm gonna plug my fucking computer in. You'd think I would do this before I started, but it's Spearhead Sundays, and that's why we're here. All right. We plugged in. Good. I think fuck. I noticed this time. I think that's why we had such bad audio syncing because last episode my thing died and I didn't notice. And I'm like, oh, I'll just fucking worry about it later. And then did I remember? No. And did you have to pay that that price? Yes. But did you complain? No. So why would I put any effort in? <laughs> right? What did I say? Um, right. Yeah. Landlord. Okay. So we move in. And whoever the tenant was before us was a fucking animal. They left the house disgusting. 
And the worst thing was the bin was full of shoe boxes that were from sketches. So they had at least four pairs of sketches. So honestly, death penalty, thanks. Oh, you have more than one pair of sketches? Death penalty. For sure. If you have sketches for anything other than jogging up to a bridge and then to jump off it, death penalty. Oh, but they're affordable. You know what else is affordable? Shoes from Target. That's what that honestly, if you're going for you, either you buy Nike's like a normal human or you get it from Target. If you go to Sketches, death penalty or you're a 50 year old Asian woman. That's fine. You know, so if you're if, if, if you're listening, Mrs. Dong, that's fine. I'm not angry at you. That's in your culture. You're a 50 year old Asian woman, Mrs. Dong. You can wear sketches. Right? But if your name is fucking Stan or Marie and you are any age other than 50 and Asian and a woman, if you put sketches on, death penalty. And that's how it's going to be. Dude, sketches are for 50 year old Asian women and hospital workers only. Every time I, w I w go through the shopping center, which I can't even remember because it's been months with all this virus shit. But we, when I go into a shopping center and you know how shopping centers, they, they have like their stores are kind of like re relegated to their own groups. They're segregated, much like race used to be, you know, where they get the, the makeup shits over here and the fashions over there and the food courts over there. And um, the, the, the Asians are over there because that's where Gucci is. You know, that's like how the shopping centers are kind of done. Whenever I would see like, you know, all the shoe stores like JD Sport and Foot Locker and Culture Kings kind of and Platypus. And I would see like sketches there. I'd be like, you're not us. You're not them. You know, it, it's it, whenever I would see that, I'm like, why are you near them? You're not them. They sell sneakers and fashion and you sell, uh, I don't know what the fuck you sell. Shoes for Asian, 50 year old Asian women and hospital workers only. It's like when I, when you see that shit, it's like, it's like seeing a year seven hang out with year nines and you're in year 12. So you, so the year seven doesn't see the difference. The year nine doesn't really get the difference, but they do know that it's fucking weird. And the year 12 sees it and goes, dude, why is a year seven hanging out with a year nine? That's fucking weird. Hang out with your own kind. How segregated was that high school, huh? I remember one of my distinct memories of like my first week in high school was when you're a year seven, you don't know how much you deserve the worst things if you're in year seven when you're in year seven you think man i'm finally in high school everyone else thinks what are these fucking little rats doing in my presence that's what they think a yuck a year seven george pell get away from me a year seven I wouldn't fucking, but my friends would. That, you know, <laughs> I'm going to get sued. And you know what? Bring it on. Take my money. I got nothing. I would. I, you know what? That's why I'm saying this shit. I used to have shit to lose. My whole tour got cancelled. I got two bucks. You want it, pal? How much does it cost? Um... If you're a year seven, you, when you're a year seven, you don't, you think that you're like part of the school. You're not, you're a, if you're, if you're a year seven, you think that you go to a high school. You don't, you're in year seven. That's the difference. When you're in year eight, that's when you're part of the high school. But when you're in year seven, you're a fucking year seven and you deserve everything you get. One of my first memories of being in year seven was... I was going up the stairs to like science, I think, and I had all my books because, you know, when you're in year seven and you have all the books and you have fucking folders and all this kind of shit, right? And then when you're in year 12, you just, you carry like maybe a pen, 
You know, that, that's really the biggest difference between a year seven and a year 12. Well, it's the second biggest difference. The first biggest difference is like pubes, you know, but the second difference is how many books you carry. For whatever reason, even though you're studying even more, the further you get into high school, the less books you carry. You know, you start out in year seven, you've got fucking 36 books you take into every class. You, you get to year 10 and you're lucky if you have like a stationary on you, you know? Like by the time I got to year 12, I had like a like a rubber in my pocket and I didn't use pencil. So why would why did I have that? What a, what a waste. I'd rock up to class and they'd be like, you don't have any books? And I go, nah. No, I don't. They go, why? I'm like, oh, I'm actually in year 12. And I don't give a fuck about this. And they go, oh, okay, well, that makes sense. My first, one of my most distinct memories of being a year seven, because being a year seven and seeing a year seven, so different, huh? My first memories of being a year seven was like walking up the steps to go to science and then these fucking massive year 12s, me and all my year seven friends without, you know, Heaps of books, no pubes. They just barge through the middle of us, and like three of my friends dropped their books. I was big, so they didn't no they didn't knock my books, but they pushed me out of the way. And I thought, man, that's so fucked. They just did that because because they're bigger than us. When I'm a year twelve, I'm not gonna do that shit, bro. Guess what the first thing I did when I was year 12, bro? I undid my tie and chucked an apple straight into those fucking year sevens. You know why? Because they're a year seven and you get what you deserve. Fuck them. That, that's, that's how it works. If you're in year seven, whatever happens, you deserve it. That's how it works. <laughs> what was, oh, yeah, my fucking landlord, bro. Right? So I thought when you move into a house, it is essentially yours to do whatever with as long as you don't fuck it, you know, like don't put holes in the wall, don't do any renovations, don't fuck it. Other than that, do whatever you want in there. That's what I thought. It's not that apparently, right? So we go, we want an electrician in. So that, you know, we can do the fucking set up the studio, the podcast space in the garage. You know, I got to pause the camera here. Maybe I'm naive here. I'm back. Maybe I'm naive because I've never rented. I've always just lived in with my parents and their giant mortgage, right? Um, so it was, yeah. So we're like, okay, we need to get lights and we need power plugs in the fucking studio so we can set up the podcast space. So I'm like, sweet. I thought as long as we get a fucking electrician that's like licensed and approval from the landlord, they can do whatever they want. We're going to go through the fucking landlord's electrician. You know what? I'm just, that's not even a complaint. To be honest, saying all of this, that's all reasonable shit. I don't know why I'm complaining about it. And the electrician the landlord's chosen is lovely. I don't know why I'm complaining about that. I'm going to be real. If you own the house, you can choose your con contractors. I'm getting to the main complaint, which I do think I have a legitimate issue with. Right? We go through all this shit and then it's been a few weeks and we've worked out that we, we have the smallest bin, like the 80 litre bin or some shit. I think it's 80. The tiniest bin. Like that's the kind of bin that a single person will fill every week. And it's me and Jazz and I'm going to be running a business from here. So that'll be like fucking Keelan. Then that'll be Ruben and Luke coming over all the time. Lots of rubbish, right? So Jazz and I... We're filling up this bin, overfill. We get a note on our fucking thing from the driver saying if we overfill the bin again, they're not even going to pick it up. So we're like, okay, fair enough. We need a new bin. So we go, hey, right, we need a new bin. We look it up. It costs $80 extra a year. And for the landlord, what is that? 50 cents a week? Taken off his fucking, what? 400 bucks? Right? But whatever, I'm like, look, we need this bin. So I say, we'll pay for it. We'll pay that extra cost. And the landlord goes, no. Oh, okay. I guess I'm going to put my rubbish under the house. I'm going to get all of my fucking rubbish and put it under your house. Is that what, that's what you want me to do? No, I can't get a bigger bin. 
Because you don't want me to pay the extra fee. You know why? Because that means that when the next cunt moves in, this landlord fuck doesn't want to pay for the big bin for them so we can save $80 a year. Hey, I'm jumping on Twitter. Let's kill every fucking landlord in the world. Dude, are you kidding? Is that even legal? I'm, I feel like that's my decision, right? If I'm paying the cost, it's my bin. I know that I'm how much rubbish I'm fucking using. Are there any armchair lawyers that can write a big long comment telling me what to do? I will send a six paragraph letter. I'm going to fucking own this cunt. Also, can someone tell me if I'm allowed to say all of this shit about my landlord in a podcast? Or <laughs> will I get affected? <laughs> Bro, that made me so angry. No, you can't have a bigger bin. Why? I don't want you to have it. That's basically, that's the reason. Because if I give it to you, I have to give it to the next person. And I'm a bad guy essentially and you know what the worst thing is we're not even talking to the fucking landlord you talk to the agent they talk to the landlord then the landlord talks to the agent the agent talks to me and then by the time that one question gets asked it's been fucking four days no one it's like chinese whispers anyway guys the point is george pell didn't fuck kids but all of his mates did and he did nothing man i've been um crazy shit's been happening like it in australia it looks like the the restrictions are going to be lifted like next week it looks like anyway daniel andrews the guy in charge of victoria is saying it i think uh, for, i don't really know because i don't live there but i think in brisbane and perth you, restaurants and bars are opening up to a limited degree i believe but that's looking like what it's going to be uh, in Australia, in Victoria as well. I think we'll we'll be a little bit later because we ha we just got a bunch of new cases, and also Andrew seems to be doing this the right way, which is paying attention to that. Like Perth is opening up because it's Perth, right? Not even coronavirus wants to go to Perth, right? Fucking Perth gets nothing, huh? You get no music, you get no touring, you get no music festivals, you don't even get the biggest deadly fucking global disease the world's the modern world has ever seen. Not even that shit makes it all the way to Perth. Coronavirus was like $300 for a one-way flight. Fuck that. I'm not sitting in a fucking... I'm not sitting in some pleb riding tiger just to infect Damo from Perth. Fuck that. I'm going to a meatpacking plant. Perth gets nothing, huh? That's how little people are going to Perth. <laughs> like, no one who travels anywhere is going home to Perth. That really says something, huh? Jeez, you got, the only way that, that Perth would get this virus would be if Bali got it bad. All those fly-in, fly-out cunts would just bring it all back. Um, here's what I think about Australia reopening. I think, right, it's weird, man. It's like the, the only two options to beat this thing is, is, is either one, a vaccine comes out of nowhere, and it's looking like, I mean, that's a year away, probably. Let's be real. Human testing, this, that. They've got to make sure it works. They've got to make sure it has no long-term damage. A vaccine is like minimum a year, right? So either we isolate until a vaccine comes, which is best case, a year, or we just let everyone get it. That's kind of the only two ways out of this, I think, right? If I'm wrong, I'd love to know, but that's what I'm seeing. So here's what I think. I think that if they open everything up, this is just like breast implants, all right? Now, this might seem like a stretch, but bear with me, all right? Opening, lifting the restrictions is just like when they invented breast implants. Sounds like a great idea will work eventually but if you are the first person to jump into that you're either gonna fucking die or you're coming out with a ruined chest because how bad were breast implants when they first invented them they look like fucking basketballs that they put underneath your rib cage not good right breast implants the idea of it sounds great and they became great but not for the first people. 
So that's what I'm saying, guys. You don't want to be that first bitch with breast implants. You want to wait until all of those other whores have taken the fall for you. And then you get those good titties. It's the same shit with these restrictions. When they relax these restrictions, you don't want to be the first one out the door. You don't want to be the, f- the first whore with a shitty chest out the door. No way. Fuck that. You want to wait and see what happens to all the other cunts who go out for breakfast. You let them take the fall for you. That's how it works. When, if they, when they lift those restrictions, I am not leaving my house for two weeks. I'm going to see what happens, and I urge you to do the same. I'm not risking my chest. You see, you thought that breast implant analogy was a stretch. Now you're thinking I'm making a lot of sense. You know? You see all those chicks with the, with those, with the first fake titties? They don't look good, do they? Fake titties now, you don't even know if they're fake until you touch them. And the reason why those titties are so good today is because of those dumb whores that took the fall and ruined their own chest. God bless those fallen soldiers. And that's what I'm saying. You don't want to be the dumb whore. You want to be the smart whore. And in this this scenario, you're not a whore for dick. You're a whore for the system we live in. Huh? I'm making a lot of sense. He do be speaking facts though. (laughs) <laughs> for real though I, I think because the only reason they would open restrictions is we haven't beaten it in Victoria anyway definitely not I don't know much of the states because I'm focusing on where I live but from what I've read it's we haven't beaten it right like Victoria just got 35 new cases out of fucking nowhere lord knows who get, who those people gave it to so we haven't beaten it The hospitals are just ready now. That's the difference. We're not safe. The hospitals are ready for us to die. That's why they can open up. They're ready for a few people to die. So I would recommend, right, and this is only so I don't lose any listeners because if I see that 2,500 plays an episode drop down to 2,499, bro, I would be so mad because one of you cunts didn't listen. What I think is when they open up the restrictions, don't go to work. If you can, of course. I know not everyone's in those, not everyone can work from home. But if you're blessed enough to stay home, I would recommend wait two weeks, see what happens. Because here's what I think is going to happen. And you're already seeing it, dude. I mean, walking around, just be, just the, the idea of loosening restrictions has made every cunt just stop giving a fuck about social distancing, about wearing masks, about washing hands. None of that. No one's looking at the lines on the fucking floor. My girl just went out to Target or whatever. Cunts were pushing in line because they saw the gaps. That's not a gap. That's protecting me from you. No, like we, we, we're talking about loosening restrictions and everyone's like, oh, that's it. It's over. We won. Dumb cunts. I went up to the local shops. No one's distancing anymore. It's like a distinct change from even just last week. No one's distancing. I, my mask just arrived. I'm wearing this N95 mask fucking everywhere. Oh, but masks don't do anything. Oh, okay. Then why do the hospitals want them? Isn't that fucking crazy that they lied about that shit? One minute they're saying, oh, masks don't work at all. Next minute, the fucking governors of America is teaching everyone how to make a mask out of a scarf. Okay. My girl brought up an interesting point. That, That I feel like when shit like this happens... It's like the first two week, really, maybe two weeks, whatever the fuck is said for the first one, maybe two weeks is what cunts are going to believe for the rest of it. More like the first three days, whatever is said in the first three days to a week is what cunts are going to believe 
for the whole thing, no matter how long it goes for. This has been going since what? Start of the year? For white people anyway? <laughs> and they were like, masks don't work. Uh, this isn't a big deal. This is just the flu. And you only have to worry about it if you're old, right? Those are like the main things that were said. It was just a flu. Masks don't work. Only old people need to be afraid. And that's what cunts believe today, right? Now we know masks do work. Studies are coming out. If 80% of people in America wore masks, whole thing would be over in a few months, right? But they're not going to do that because cunts in the first week said, oh, they don't work. So that's what everyone just believes forever because people get sick of it. You know, I'm sick of reading about this. I'm sure you're sick of hearing about this shit. I put out a video, that that church video I did, I thought it was very funny. It fucking tanked. Because cunts were like, ah, I'm sick of it. And you know what? Fair enough. I'm sick of hearing all this shit. I see this stuff and I'm like, you know what? Even if it could save my life. Boring. I want to play video games and read about something else. Um, it's interesting. So like I've started wearing a mask. You know what shits me about that? Oh, hospital workers need them. Yeah, they do. Okay. Hospital workers need them. Now, if the government did not prepare for this shit properly like they should because they're the government, why does a man's family have to die? Do you see what I'm saying? If you're, if you're a dad, and let's say for argument's sake, masks are essential to survive. You got kids and someone says, you can't, a mask is going to save your life, but don't get one because hospital workers need them. You what, you're going to look at your kids and go, yeah, sorry, Timmy. But, uh, you know, I read on Twitter that hospital workers need a mask. So uh, I guess we're all going to die. Nah, I'm getting that fucking mask, bro. <laughs> it's weird man I hope that this scares the fuck out of all these governments and they go shit maybe we need to be ready for shit like this maybe we should be listening to those cunts who've been saying a coronavirus is coming from China makes you think bro especially in America how little they give a fuck about the actual people but anyway I suggest right and I'm not a doctor in fact, I failed high school. The only thing I got good at was harassing your sevens. I think that you want to just wait two weeks. See what happens. Best case scenario, I'm wrong. Wait, worst case scenario, I'm wrong. Best case scenario, everyone dies, but you don't. And my podcast listenership stays where it is. <laughs> That's right. I'm not trying to save your life. I'm trying to get those fucking ad rates. Dude, Ad, the ads are crazy. No, no business is spending any money on anything online, which is weird because everyone is spending their money online. If I were a business and I was trying to sell shit, I'd be pumping money into this shit, not taking it out. You're crazy for doing that. In Australia, uh, I was talking about with all these rappers like Cursor, Greeley, all, all these people were in this big group chat. All of them were saying their merch is going fucking insane. Greeley goes, this is the richest our fan base has ever been. Everyone is on Centrelink. Their pays have doubled. This is the most money they've ever had in their lives, some of them. Like, fuck yeah, I can, I can afford the Greeley t-shirt. I'm going to buy a cursor hoodie. You know, e-commerce is fucking booming. Got a few boys that are doing that e-commerce bullshit. Making stacks of money. And I was thinking, bro, I can't fucking wait. I'm going to print cash. <laughs> bro. My views have doubled and my ad rates have halved. I'm making the exact same amount of money. <laughs> I've just got all my shows canceled. This sucks. I thought I was going to, I fully thought I was, this was just my, my moment, bro. I thought I was going to capitalize on this shit. Dude, channel's going to blow up. And it is, which is great. But fuck, you know, that rent's looking a bit scary. Maybe I can't afford that extra $80 for the fucking bin. Uh, support me on Patreon if you'd like to assist the production of the show and keep everybody employed here. Uh, you get early access to everything that I do and access to the Discord server. Dude, on uh, Tuesday, someone in the Discord has set up a... F they're doing a fucking radio show. 
they've like picked music and they've done a playlist for a few hours and they're going to do some radio show. I'm going to tune in. Uh, it sounds like a lot of fun. It's going to be the voice chat thing. It's very, it's, man, I fucking love this shit. That's what I fucking love about building like the Patreon and the Discord is having this this little community that I could, that's like built around, not really around me, but, but around what I'm doing. It's fucking sick. Just like-minded individuals connecting with each other. It's so cool to like check in and just see, oh shit, they're doing this and they're doing that. It's like, um, it's like the Sims, bro. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that I'm some overlord. You know what I mean? It's fucking, it's cool, dude. Like to, to like, to build to build like a community of of people who enjoy what you do and it's like with the patreon and the discord it's like they're not just there for me they're there to hang out with each other as well you know which i think is fucking sick to like i don't know just collect a bunch of like-minded people that can get along with each other and have similar interests and fuck around online and keep each other entertained throughout all this shit it's really really cool it's very fucking sick like you know on easter they're organizing um Easter egg hunts uh, in Minecraft and shit. Uh, and now they're doing radio shows and shit like that. It's very, very cool. I, I think that's fucking... It's a privilege to, like, you know, be at the, the the head of a community like that. It's very, very cool. So if you're part of it, thanks, man. You know, I'm, I'm in there as much as I can. But uh, what, what I think is really cool is when I'm not there and they're, you know, having fun. It's cool. <sighs> All right. Man, okay, I wanted to talk about, I also wanted to talk about this fucking, um, this recent shooting in America. This is going to be difficult, um, but I wanted to talk about it because I think it's in, it's not interesting. So who isn't interesting when cops, when cops kill people? It's, it is such a, I'm going to preface this with, I'm going to tell you what I know. Because I think the, the biggest thing with all of these shootings, like, 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 uh, you know, the, like the big ones that are like, oh, this cop killed this black guy and he was completely unarmed and it was bull- bullshit. And, and, and that's what it all, it always looks like that at the start. But then I wouldn't even say, it's just some of the, it's very rarely, it's like, oh shit, if we waited five days, it wasn't this, it was actually that. So I've always thought that when this shit happens, it's such an emotional, terrible thing that it's like whatever you know what I'm saying whatever is first said is what people believe for the rest of it but sometimes it changes now for this one I don't think it's it's that and I don't think most of them are that but sometimes it is and I've fallen into this thing where I watch you know you see some terrible video or some terrible post and you go that's fucking bullshit you get all angry about it three days later you go oh fuck I started it you know Jussie Smollett you know that shit but I don't think this is that at this point, you know, I'm still saying it could very well turn into that. What I know is why I'm prefacing it. I'm recording this on a Saturday. So what I know from the research that I've done is there, there's a video of this dude uh, who got killed by two guys. And so the story that I understand, I've looked at a few different angles, but from what I understand is two guys. Um, one of them is an ex-cop. Oh, my God. If I've, if I've said the fucking wrong thing already. Um I'm going to crack it. Because there's a police element to it. One of them's involved with cops. Yeah, former cop. That's right. Okay, <clears throat> cool. I'm just fact check, trying to fact check myself. Because <clears throat> it's... Right, so what I know is two guys, older guy, like almost 70, and his son, they see a black dude running. And in that suburb, there had been multiple robberies. And in their minds, this guy looked like the description of everyone else. So the old guy goes, right, let's fucking go get this cunt. He runs back home. He grabs his son. They both get their guns because, of course, shotgun and a handgun, I believe. And they go and they chase down this black dude and they drive in front. They drive behind him and in front of him and they're trying to get him to stop. And he's like, oh, fuck, there is no way I am stopping for two dudes with guns chasing me in a fucking truck who would. Right. So he's like, no way. He goes the other way. They go the other way. And then they get out. And from what it looks like, either, uh, either the video seems to be unclear, either the, the, one of the white dudes 
uh, goes up to him and they try to do a citizen's arrest, but there's no audio. This is what they said. They tried to do a citizen's arrest and then the black guy attacked them. That's what they said. But then what a bunch of other people are saying is that the black guy just got fucking murdered, basically. And I'm leaning towards it looks like he was fucking killed because, right? Or maybe not that. Here's what I think. Don't chase cunts with guns. Why do you need to do that? I think that's the biggest fucking thing is, hey, you're not the cops. You might have used to be a cop, but you're not. And unless you saw the dude, I think, I mean, when is a citizen, when does a citizen need to perform a citizen's arrest? Really? I mean, unless they're robbing you, maybe, like you catch them in your house, fair enough. If they're fuck, if they've broken into your house and you're there, bets are fucking off. You know, if I had a family, someone breaks in, I got a, I got a weapon. Hey, man, it's over for you. <laughs> That's what it's all game over, bro. You lose. I got kids. It's over. Right, but these can't see this dude who maybe robbed a house in their heads. Right, turns out he didn't. Maybe he robbed a house, right, in their minds. So they go, right, let's go and fuck with this stranger and get guns and chase him in the street. Now, imagine if you're that guy, right, and you're a black dude and you have all this fucking shit in your head about, you know, racist people and racist crazies and, you know, cops killing black dudes during traffic stops. Like, uh, you know, however much you believe that to be true, if you're a black guy, that's in your fucking head. You know, so um, or anyone, you know, two two guys in a fucking truck chasing down with guns. I mean, what are you gonna do? Uh, respond reasonably? I don't know who the fuck you think you are, but you're not James Bond, bro. I would freak. Anyone would freak, right? I'm not stopping for them. I, I don't know why he would. It's it's crazy, man. And, you know, maybe they tried to tell him to stop and then and he, he it looked like they were trying to fucking kill him. So he was like, well, either I die or I try and get the gun from them. And it's self-defense. I think it is fucking crazy that there's something sus going on there because that old dude is an ex-cop. There's something going on that that no charges were, were laid. That's crazy. Really insightful thing I saw online about it was... They've been charged now. And a really insightful thing that someone said is they're not being charged because they saw the video. They're getting charged because we've seen the video. Because they've seen it. They've already seen it. And they were like, yeah, whatever. It's crazy, bro. But, you know, based on the story now, it seems like... It seems pretty fucking bad for these white dudes. But I've thought that before. And the story's fucking morphed and changed, you know? Jussie Smollett's probably a bad example. That cunt looks sus from day one. But there's been a few, you know what I mean? Or even, you know, just videos of fucking fights where someone starts filming halfway through and it's just this cunt getting bashed. It's like, oh, this looks terrible. And then someone else releases the other angle. He started it. I don't, from, it it looks very, very unlikely that, that, that that's what happened here. But uh, it's also, you know, it's not over. It's, it's weird, man. I think, yeah, mind your own fucking business, I think, is, is like, you don't, you don't need to chase cunts down and perform a citizen's arrest. Like, it's really not your job anymore because you retired, bro. You're not a cop, are you? Because that's, that, you know, that shit can happen. You go into a situation like that, you run at some stranger with guns, you don't know what the fuck they're going to do. They don't know what the fuck they're going to do. Someone came up with, with a gun, I don't know what the fuck I would do. You know, everyone has an idea of what they would do, but no one has, no one knows because it's never happened, you know, unless you're some fucking insane army cunt. Happens every day. Yeah, bro, I live for it. Can't wait. You know, those cunts, they scare the fuck out of me. They got those combat eyes. <laughs> you, know, you know, you see those people that just have combat eyes and you're like, fuck, this guy is just waiting for shit to kick off. I met one of those dudes. I met, I think he was SAS, I believe. Not a hundred percent sure, but I think he was SAS. Uh, I met him, and he had combat eyes. He had combat eyes and posture. Fucking huge. You know, people that are just that are, they're like, oh, you don't go to the gym. You fucking you train to kill cunts. 
Like you, you're not trying to get a six pack. You're trying to get a scalp. <laughs> That's what you're training for. I met one of those guys, and it, and it was just like he was he was fun to be around, but you, he was just looking around. You know what I mean? Like he was just ready. Not even ready. He was just like like he a little part of him was like can't wait. You know, because he wasn't he wasn't like a war. Uh, like a, a retired war vet. He was like current serving, seen a lot of shit, done a lot of shit, r- fucking ready to go back, just waiting. And, and you know, you, you're in that combat mindset, as you have to be, and it, it, this, they're fucking scary to be around, bro. That cunt was scared the fuck out of me. I remember hanging out with him, and he was like, uh, I, I, my, his mate taught, like told me stories of like, bouncers fucking with him and the boys on a night out and them just waiting for the fucking lights to change drop three of them and then fucking exfiltrate army style and that was like a friday night for the boys knock out all of the security and fucking leave just because they could (laughs) just because ah you know raring for a bit of action um i remember hanging out with him this one night and uh joking around and I was talking how I'm a comedian he's like yeah I'm, I'm army and, and uh, I was like oh yeah so like have you served he goes yeah I've gone here 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 and then a bunch of other things that I can't tell you about and I was like oh okay so you're like he goes yeah yeah I've done like covert stuff like pretty you know pretty real shit was what he said real shit bro pretty real shit <laughs> I was like oh okay this guy's killed people this guy's killed a lot of cunts this guy's killed a few people so I'm like all right and you could tell he he saw me realize that and he loved that I mean who wouldn't yeah bro I've killed heaps of cunts legally you know <laughs> So I'm like, all right, cool. I understand we're on this level now. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool. I wasn't intimidated. I was just like, whoa, fuck. Um, and I, remember I, I go, oh, I'm a comedian. He goes, oh, yeah. So you like, you like do all the all the fuck stuff. You know, like like Jim Jeffries. I'm like, yeah, I love Jim. He goes, bro, he's fucking great. Start talking about Jim. And he goes, man, I love how he goes here and he goes here and he just doesn't go anywhere. It's like, yeah, I really believe in that. You know, you shouldn't make, you should be allowed to make fun of everything nothing's off limit and then he goes nothing about army boys though yeah and i was like <laughs> yeah no never would never joke about that no sorry Woo! nothing but respect for our boys in green net would never and uh i would but not in front of him no sorry you know that's that's when i figured out the type of man that i are you know you you either You'd some some people stand up for what they believe in, and other people will meet a man who's killed cunts and goes, you know what? You know, maybe you know we just should fucking give up on freedom of speech. And yeah, I guess you know I'll stay in the house forever. <laughs> Does what you want, you know? I don't know, bro. All right, we got to do. We I got to wrap up here. I got I got time for one miscellaneous bit at the end. I don't know why I talked about that shit. A little bit heavy. Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, I just, I think it, I think it looks bad, basically, is what I'm saying. It just looks very bad. And I think, uh, to me, it just looked like a fucking almost 70 year old dude going, oh fuck, there's lots of robberies around. I better stay vigilant. Sees one black guy running and was like, he fucking did that shit. Um, Turns out he was just going for a jog. But then other cunts on Twitter, I don't know how verified this is, are saying that he was wearing boots and he was too far away from his house. But I haven't found anything to back that up other than Twitter replies. So I don't know how legitimate that is. But, you know, that's that's why I always say, you know, you got to wait to see how this shit pans out. you got to let people do a proper investigation. Oh, my God. Sorry, the camera died and I don't know how long it's been dead for. I hope it was only a couple of seconds. Um, And it will probably happen again. (laughs) Um, All right. Where are we? Miscellaneous bit at the end. Miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast, man. It's where I answer life advice uh, questions sent in by you, the listener. If you'd like to send an email, send it to podcast at loosespears.com. Uh, and I will try my best to help you out. Podcast at loosespears.com. Or if you even have a story you think I would enjoy, um, I'd love to hear from you. 
Hey, Lewis. Uh, I've been a long-time fan and your No Slide Season show was amazing. Thank you so much. Dear God, I miss performing. This is the longest time I haven't performed in my life. Bro, let me tell you, that first show back, I'm going to be rusty as fuck, bro. That'll be an experience. That might be the shittest I've ever been since I started. I think I'm. I, there are going to be so many cunts that just forget how to do it. I reckon we all have, all the stand-up comedians. Uh, how do you tell jokes? Anyway, um, my issue are the... The subject line is, I'm so worried about what people think of me that it's making me a very boring person. Um, my issue is I seem to have a serious problem worrying about what people think of me. Every time I want to try something new, I freak out because I think people are going to think I'm stupid or I'm a poser only looking for attention. Because of this, I don't really try anything new or have any interests, which is making me a very boring person. I'm planning of, of getting out of this shithole known as Perth, there's your problem, and moving to Melbourne, but I'm afraid I'm not going to make any friends because of this. If you have any advice, that will be really helpful and I can't wait until you can go back to touring. Me too, bro. Don't know if I'll ever make it to Perth. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. I love Perth. Love performing there. Don't like paying those flights, bro. That's a fucking hit, isn't it? Okay, look, you are spending too much time on the internet, bro. No one gives a fuck what you do. Here's the thing. If you try something new, right? Even if other people... The thing with trying new shit or getting into new hobbies is... Even if cunts outside that new interest think you're weird the other people inside it won't because to them it's normal do you see what i mean me playing sport would seem weird to my nerd friends me being a nerd would seem weird to my sport friends because those two people wouldn't really do those both of those things so whatever you decide to do in those circles will be normal. And the only thing weirder than trying a new thing is trying nothing. Then you'll just be that, like there are so many people out there like that. Lots of older people who just have no interest. What do you do? Oh, well, I have, I wake up and then I go to work and then I get home and I watch TV and then I go to sleep. And uh, I wonder why I'm sad because you're doing nothing. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to give more constructive advice other than just do it. Uh, I would think that you need to, maybe your issue isn't uh, having no hobbies. Maybe your issue is confidence and maybe you need to do a th few things that can help you become more confident. I think that, that what a really, really useful thing in, in to know going into anything new is you're going to be fucking shit and that's fine. You're going to suck at it, and that's normal. You are going to be absolutely fucking terrible at the new thing you try, and so is everybody else. I think a lot of people go into this shit, they want to be good because you have the, you know, you don't want to be a beginner at anything. You want to be the, you want the finished product, but you have to be shit. You don't start something and become, you know, above average, and that's how you become pro because you were good at the start. Every pro at the start was shit. Every one of them. I sucked at stand up when I started. I was terrible. I did all right on my first set, and I was like, fuck, I'm, I'm bred for this shit. And then for six months, I tanked. <laughs> I got lucky on my first go, and then I tanked for six months. You just have to be shit and that's, and you have to know you're going to be shit and you have to, I'm going to be shit and that's okay because that's normal because so is everybody else. I think that maybe, uh, dude, you just need to go out of your comfort zone. I remember I, I didn't, sometimes you have to identify a weakness within yourself and you need to go into that zone. I remember I used to suck at talking to chicks and I knew that about me and I, it frustrated me. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to fucking do it. I'm going to talk to chicks. And I started off by just talking to, to like girls in groups that I didn't know. Not in a creepy way, like at parties and shit. I would just go in with a mate. I'm like, I'm going to fucking make these chicks laugh. And then I'm going to dip. Went in, make a few people laugh, left before it got too weird. Kept doing that. I'm like, oh fuck, this is easy. Now I can do it. And then I got to talk to girls one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Sometimes you just got to dive in, be a bit of a weird cunt. Now, if you think also, I don't know what the situation is like in Perth, but from what I understand about smaller places with smaller circles, 
when you do something different from the norm, there is more judgment. The only thing to say is fuck those cunts. They're not going to matter. You know? I remember when I first started this online thing, there was one cunt in high school who said that he was going to beat the shit out of me for it. Guess who's a fucking loser? Not me, bro. <laughs> Not me. So that that I don't know. It, it's it's hard to give it. It's with this kind of shit. It's hard to give like non-standard advice because the answer is always the same. Go and do it. Fuck those cunts. If you're struggling with your own self-esteem, hey, bro, maybe you need to do some stuff to make yourself feel better. Maybe you need to go out and buy some nice clothes, make yourself look nice. Do you know who you are? Maybe that's the issue. Maybe you don't know who you are. You want to try new things. You don't know what. Who, who the fuck are you? Maybe you need to go out there and make yourself look nice. Fucking get a cool haircut. Get some clothes. You know, use that Centrelink money if you're on it. If, you, if it's doubled up, fucking use that shit, bro. Stimulate the economy. Buy some nice shoes. Don't go to sketches unless you're you know, 50 and your name is Mrs. Dong. Don't even have a first name. Don't know what it is. That's, that's my suggestion, bro. You're going to suck. You're going to be fucking terrible, dude. And that's fine. And if there are other cunts judging, who cares? No one gives a fuck. No one will care in two weeks when you start a new thing. Two weeks after you start a new thing, it's not a new thing anymore. He just does that. So just go and do that, bro. Within those circles of those new things, you will be normal albeit new and outside of those circles you'll be weird but who gives a fuck you're not in those circles you know what I mean just go and go out there and do you bro if you if, if you're really struggling hit the gym get some fitness in your life that always helps go to the gym go running you can't go to the gym sorry do not do not go to the gym you'll die do push-ups do whatever you can look up some home workout guides start looking good start eating properly You'll feel better, bro. Go out there and do that shit, all right? I'm sorry for not giving you any left of field advice, but there really is no secret. If you if you feel uncomfortable going into a space you want to go into, guess what? Go deeper, bro. Keep doing that shit. Or lass, any girls watching? Stop being a fucking sook. Bro, do you know how, do you know how uncomfortable it was when I was in Bunnings today wearing a face mask? Every cunt was staring at me. All right, all right, you're going to die. Uh-huh. You know who's going to be uncomfortable? You, when you inhale. Not me. I'm wearing that fucking mask. I don't know if they're staring at me for wearing a mask or if they just thought I was going to rob the place. Probably a bit of both. Let's be let's be real, guys. I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you want to catch uh, all episodes early, consider supporting me on Patreon. We got a Discord community. It's fucking banging. I'm I'm in there as much as I can. And uh, you know, even even when I'm not not in there, it's fucking popping right now. Um, and uh, I think no promises, but I think that next week I'm going to be in the uh, the proper studio. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'll be in the regular set with the backdrop, looking all nice for here. This is just temporary until we're setting up the studio we've got to get the electrician in and set up powerpoints he's coming in on monday uh so hopefully you know next episode will be in the studio and i'm still looking for suggestions on what to do for episode 200 so please do comment send me a message follow me on instagram or hit me up in the discord all right thank you very much for listening uh i've been lewis spears and i hope you uh have a fucking shit one